All right. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you for the community, everyone, uh, for having me here. It's great. Um, and, you know, to talk about a topic that I love and that I, you know, um, have a day to day experience with in production and in my work on day to day, like Jepa Compose. So, yeah, let's jump right through it. Uh, so, I'm talking about uh, Jepa Compose performance, right? Like tips and tricks. So, one of the biggest fears of us uh, when introducing a new technology is, uh, you know, to be able to write uh, to, to, to implement it the right way, right? To avoid like uh, missing obvious stuff that will make our app janky. And Compose is a, is a big step, you know, it's a big jump from what we had. So let's good, let's, uh, let's see um, a, lot of, a couple of uh, tips and tricks and things to take in consideration uh, when you implement Compose. So let me focus this here. All right, so first of all, uh, my name is uh, Eury Perez Beltre. I'm from the Dominican Republic. I'm an Andrea architect, and I have 12 years of experience developing software and plus nine years creating Android apps specifically. Uh, I organize a Google developer group in Santo Domingo. And I'm a Google developer expert in Android, and also I'm a Christian leader. So today we're going to see first uh, about the compose phases. Uh, we need to really understand what this, what th those phases are. Then we are going to see some performance tips, and finally we're going to see some compose uh, something about compose stability uh, to really understand it, how we can detect issues, and how we can improve it. Um, or avoid the issues. So, compose phases. So, compose uh, these phases are basically the process from um, building the composable to showing it in the screen, right? From from the ground up to what would you show on the on the screen. That's what we call the compose phases. And then, so, so a little bit before. So, the compose phases are are, are compose of three phases. The first one is composition. The second one is layout. The third one is drawing. So let's see what um, each of each, each uh, does. So the first one, composition, describes what UI to show, right? So compose uh, runs composable functions in this step and creates a description of the UI. So in this, in this phase, compose don't care anything else than what is going to be shown, right? So in this phase, Compose will build a tree uh, to represent the relationship between the composables. So to illustrate this, I built this simple um, UI, which is called user card, as you see in the top. So this is a column, as you see, we have, uh, uh, the name and the, and the picture and below some more text. So we have a column and then we have header row, which is a picture and the name. And below we have the text, very simple. Um, so to illustrate this, I want you to, to see the tree that Compose will build in the first um, phase of the uh, composition, which is, sorry, of, of, of Compose, which is the composition. So first, we have the user cards the first composable. So inside we have a column, right? We have we have only one composable, which is a column. And column has two composables, header row and text. And then header row has a row inside and then a box and a text. So in this phase, this is the only thing that Compose will take care about, you know, building uh, this tree of who is inside of who and um, an identifier basically to know who is who. So Compose know what to what to draw or what to work on in the next phases. So the next one is the layout. The layout describes where to place the UI. The, the, the UI, sorry. So this phase consists of two steps: measurement and placement. And as you may uh, wonder, so basically, uh, measurement to you know to know the measures within height. Of every composable in placement x y right so this is all about um this phase so 
A layer elements measure and place themselves in any shell elements in 2D coordinates, like X, Y, like I said, for each node in the layout tree that we saw previously. So here's a little uh, video. So basically, we uh, compose when, when it goes to the second step or second phase, it takes a tree that it built and then it uh, measure everything and place it in 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 some in some uh, you know where where it needs to be according to the modifiers and uh, the the nature of the composable. Like if it's a row, uh, the children will be um, you know stacked uh, horizontally. Same with the column vertically. So this is what it does in this phase. And lastly, the drawing phase describes how it will render the composables. And in this phase, UI elements draw into a canvas, usually a device a screen, right? So here's another video. We take the measurement and placement of the previous layout phase, and then we actually draw. If it's an image, we, um, you know, it draws the image, it draws the text, it draws everything into a screen. So we have a, a, a final result. And basically, each step output, as you see, serves as an input for the following. So the output of composition is the tree which layout takes to measure and place all the composables in the in the screen, and then those measures and coordinates are passed to the drawing, which will be taking care of you know drawing in the canvas basically. So finally. Uh, this process, what this does essentially is turning data into UI, as you see in this in this simple graph. The data input in Compose is called state, right? So something important to know is that Compose keeps track of the reads of the state, so where the state is read, and will recompose only if needed. So if you don't if uh, let's say in the previous example where we have an image a text for the name and a text for some description if only the description changed it it won't recompose uh, the entire thing or won't recompose the image and the name right it, will, it, it is smart enough to only recompose what changed and that's what's great about compose because it makes it performant so compose also keeps track of in which phase the state is read so not only where it is read, but in which state or in which phase. So later we will see why this is very important. And let's go to the second part of the agenda, which is performance tips. So first, the, a composable can be recomposing on every frame. So we, we, I mean, everywhere we see in the documentation that we need to be careful about what we do inside a composable, because this can be, re I mean, Compose can be operating and making changes and recomposing on every single frame. And why is this? Because in Compose, the way we have to update or to reflect the changes in the UI is by recomposing, right? We're running the um, Compose faces that we saw before again, right? To, when Compose go through those faces, then it knows uh, what to change in, e in each phase, right? So when we're running an animation that runs on every frame to update the, the UI accordingly, so a, a compose will be recomposing on every single frame. So the tip number one is to remember to avoid repeating yourself. So sometimes we have like conditions, like uh, if the state <clears throat> is enabled, uh, then uh, put a blue background, else put a light gray background. So we shouldn't be doing this kind of operations in Compose. Instead, we should be using the remember block. Now the remember block, what it does is that it, as it names it implies, it will remember a value across recompositions. And it would only change if the state that is read inside of the remember block has changed, right? So if the is enabled value of the state hasn't changed, and all the other values has changed, then the remember block won't be re-executing. So this is great. And there's no like uh, uh, code or logic or whatever as small as that, you know, we don't need to take care of that or we, we don't need to care about it. 
Um, we need to, to be really careful what we do because imagine running any kind of things uh, on every frame that can, can, can cause our UI to be, to be janky. So take this in consideration. The tip number two is that you're not going to need all those updates to see what this means. So basically, um, imagine that uh, we are working on a live feature, like an Instagram live or whatever. And then um, when people click on the like button, we see the, 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 like, the like icon going uh, up, you know, animating. So, but we want that when the, when the uh, amount of likes is greater than 20, then we put a fire icon right instead of a like icon so in this case we are using the remember function right we said that remember function is great to to avoid you know repeating ourselves and doing more work than needed but this has an issue is that um we were it, when when the when the amount of likes goes above than 20 we don't care like if, it, if it's 22 25 30 we don't care we only care if it's more than 20. so to solve that, we have a uh, side effect called derived set off. So basically what this does is that it uh, keeps track, right, of the, of the logic inside of it and only will uh, recompose or recalculate that block if needed, right? So in this case, whenever this is greater than 10, than 20, sorry, it will, like when it goes from 20 to 21, it will re-execute re but uh, that's, that, that will be the last time. So this is great when you are like listening to scroll events and you need to know like if the, if the first position is not visible, you don't keep recalculating this block, this logic again, you just do it once and just forget about it uh, and, and, and avoid doing all, the, all, all that work when the user keeps scrolling um, you know, down your list. So the tip number three is that do you have an ID? Then the list items should too. This is very important. Uh, please don't do the list like that, like in the left, where you just only care about uh, drawing. But as, is, as, the, as the example in the right, you need to specify the key. In this case, I'm specifying the ID of the object as a key. And this is because if the list changes and it doesn't have an ID, then compose uh, doesn't mean it struggles to know what really changes and will recompose the entire list, right? So it's very important. So compose can only go there to the exact item that was changed and only um, recompose that single item and, you know, avoid doing more work than, than needed. The team number four is that sometimes it's good to procrastinate. We have been told differently, but... In Compose, this is true. Um, basically, we have this example where we have a, a, an animation. We will, we will want to um, change the offset of the card as the user scrolls. So we have a scroll position provider, and then we have an offset um, um, call in the modifier. Like we are changing, we, we're passing a value. So uh, as the user scrolls, this creates like a kind of parallax effect. So the issue with this is that you remember before that I mentioned that Compose keeps track of in which phase the state is read, right? So whenever you read a state inside of a composable scope, like in this case, this uh, when this changes, it, it will run from the composition phase, right? It will, it will run the composition, the layout, and then the drawing. But there is a way to get around that. As you see, there is another way to, to set the offset, like, with the, with, the, with the lambda function. Like by doing this, we defer the state red, you know, reading the state to a later phase, which is the, in this case, the layout phase. There's the same, there's similar other uh, functions in the modifier. For example, there is a background that accepts a color or something. And then you have back, you have draw behind, with, which accepts a lambda, that in, in that land, lambda of the draw behind is executed in the drawing phase. So in this example with the offset with the lambda, if the scroll posi position uh, provider changed, then only the layout and the drawing phase are recomposed, right? They are executed in the recompose. 
Um, but then if you if you draw behind when setting a background and then the state you're reading inside of the of your draw behind is uh, is changed, then only the draw the drawing phase is uh, executed when recomposing. So you see, then you're skipping one or two phases, and that's great because compose doesn't need to rebuild the tree because it hasn't changed, or compose doesn't need to remeasure everything, replace like like calculate the placement of everything again because it hasn't changed. It only focuses on what really uh, changed, what really needs to be done in the recomposition uh, process. The tip number five is this mother book is quicker to read. And that's because a Compose works really, really well when you enable R8. And not only that, like there's a, a drastic, um, uh, drastically uh, all right drastically improved performance right uh, it, it's, it's not recommended to to run compose to use compose with ra disabled um but then if you write baseline profiles your um your performance will also um you know be even better so um before you're if, if you're planning to migrate before you do that uh please enable r8 so you don't see uh, any unexpected behavior like janky scrolling or or whatever. I wrote a, a, a blog post. You can you can visit my blog, uh, which is uh, yuriperez.dev. I wrote uh, a post on on how to do this, some considerations you need to make, and and so on. So now um, let's jump to the to the to the last part of the talk, which is the more the most interesting, in my opinion, the stability. So let's jump. Basically, um, just to understand it and to you know recap, our recomposition is a process of updating the UI to reflect the changes in the state. So in the image in the top, we see the life cycle of a composable. So the composable enters the composition, then may or may not recompose zero or more times, right? And then when it goes away, when we hide it on where, or, or when we go at, I mean, away from the screen, then this composable leaves the composition, right? So this process of updating the UI um, by the changes you know, on the state is called recomposition. So compose is performant because it recomposes only what changed. We already you know, talked um, a little bit about that before so and it relies on a calling feature to accomplish that and what is that it's called immutability and what's immutability immutability is basically a confidence that a variable or object won't change after the initial assignment or creation right so is, is that guarantee that that integer or that string won't ever uh, change after the initial value that was given to that variable or that object, right? So following this principle, Compose compiler assigns a stability status to classes and properties, right? It's like, it's like a, a label, like uh, to to, identi to to identify um, which uh, how how immutable or how stable the the object or the property is, and these labels are three basically. The first one is unstable. Uh, and this means that the property or the object is mutable and don't notify composition when it changes. The second one is a stable. A stable, stable means that it's mutable, but it does notify composition when it changes. So it allows Compose to know where to re when to recompose. And the last one is the first one, the ideal one is immutable. Um, it tells the Compose compiler that is guaranteed that this data will never, ever, ever change. So let's see some examples. Uh, you remember the example, um, the, you know, the, the sample UI that I built before. So let's extend it a little bit. I added now a list of tags in the bottom. And uh, we have you know, the header with the image and the, and, the, and the name. Then we have some text and then a list of chips to, to identify um, basically um, some tags or whatever from that user and this is a data class that we are using we 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 named this class user state then we have a full name uh we have a bio we have a tag we have uh, a list of a string which is the tags uh we avoided the, the the image for now so 
What I mean, if you if you if you paid attention um, to you know to to the previous explanation, uh, you already saw a red flag, which is that the full name is 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 mutable, right? Is is a var, not a vowel. And then what this will cause is that, as you see here, the full name is marked as a stable because if you remember the previous slides, uh, stable means that it's mutable, but it notifies the composition when it changed it does but the class is marked as unstable right because compose cannot guarantee that this is immutable that this won't change um after the 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 the, 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 the composition phases finish after after the ui was was built and then um so i will explain this later this is from the compose compiler metrics plugin and then when when we are checking the, the the metrics or the report for the composable which is which is in this case user card then the state is marked as un, unstable and you see that in the top the the uh, composable is marked as restartable so it can be restarted but it's not marked as skippable right skippable is the ability that that a composable has to be skipped if the arguments of this composable hasn't changed. So in this case, the arguments for user card is user state. So if a recomposition happens and user state hasn't changed, this composable will anyway be recomposed because it's marked, it's not marked as skippable. So here uh, we see the issue and what we can do about that, we can just uh, change, um, to bar to make it, you know, um, immutable. And then when we rerun the compose compiler metrics, now the variable is 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 uh, stable, but it's stable, right? So like before, but we haven't fixed it. And why is that? It's because um, the list is marked as unstable. But why is that? Because as we see, we see that it's a vol, right? Vol should be immutable. The thing is that collections are considered unstable in Compose. But why in the world is that? I mean, why? Like we have an, a, a list, we don't have a mutable list. Why then Compose things like that? And it's because that mutable list or mutable set or mutable map is a subclass of the interface. In this, in this case, mutable list is a, is a subclass of list, right? Therefore, Compose cannot guarantee its immutability. Um, so that makes a lot, of, a lot of sense. And as I mentioned, uh, the same happens with set and also map. So there's a couple of, of ways to get around that. And it's uh, using the Kotlin X immutable collections. As you see, we changed here list by immutable list. Below is a URL, so you can check it. It's github.com slash codling slash codlingx that collections that immutable. But this is a work in progress. Um, and uh, this is, you know, um, maybe could not be ready for production. So take care of that and check, you know, the changes, the release notes, blah, blah, blah. And <clears throat> another, um, another approach is to annotate the class with the stable or immutable. So in this case, we annotate it with a stable, and that means that the list will still be unstable because it is it's, it's, it's not immutable, right? But the class will be marked as a stable. And now when we rerun the Compose Compiler Metrics plugin, then now our composable will be marked as skippable because all its arguments are marked as stable now our composable can be skipped if something there hasn't changed so i have been reading um until now the results of the compose compiler metrics and to get these results you need to integrate that i left the url in the bottom you need to go to developer.andrew.com slash jetpack slash compose slash performance slash stability slash diagnose or even easier, just go to Google and write Compose Compiler Metrics and you will find it right away. 
So in the right, you'll see <clears throat> like a file that uh, uh, for the, from the Compose Compiler metrics that talks about, I mean, that, that compiles the classes, st st um, uh, stability status. So you see there that you see a stable uh, uh, marker and also the my state, for example, below is marked as unstable because we have the list which is unstable and we haven't used the Codling X, Codling X collections Neither uh, we have uh, market as a, as a stable. So there's also an article that help us understand these metrics, read these metrics, and use it. So we hint, um, if, if you plan to, to use classes from another module where the Compose compiler is not run, those classes are marked as unstable. One alternative is to create wrappers, like in your in your feature module, for example, or your app module on whatever module you're working with Compose and trying to use that model from another module. You can create a wrapper and annotate that wrapper with a stable annotation, and then it will be safe to use it uh, with Compose. Or you can make, if possible, the Compose compiler run in that, that other module and then that uh, those classes will be marked as uh, as stable. Another hint is that flows are marked as unstable because they don't notify changes to the composition. So instead of uh, making the flow as part of your state, then just collect it in your V model and just update your state instead of of you know making the the flow a property in your state because that will cause um, stability issues. That's pretty much it for me. Um, here are my social networks. You can follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can, you can uh, go to my blog, uh, follow me on Twitter, and uh, let's get in touch. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to 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 uh, reach out. And I don't know if, if uh, there's a question. Okay. Hello, Yuri. That was a quite informative session. Okay, we have some uh, comments and questions already. Uh, please, if you have any uh, questions, uh, write them in the comment section below. Uh, okay. Ryan is uh, saying really great slide, Yuri. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, I myself has a, has a comment on your uh, immutable class, so I was suggesting why we can't uh, wrap the class uh, the list in a rubber class, but you already covered that. Sorry, which one? Uh, mutable. Sorry, what, what was the question there? Uh, it was a comment on your uh, mutable uh, class. Uh, I suggested that you, we can wrap the list in a rubber class so we can mark it as a mutable. Oh yeah, yeah. So there's there, that, that's the alternative. Like when we when you see classes from. Uh, from another modules, right? Um, so you cover that uh, one. One is to create the wrapper, and another one is to make the compose compiler run in that other module. So uh, you know that's a limitation that compose has right now, the compose compiler. So um, yeah. Okay, we have another one. Are inline inline composable scalable, and why? Yeah, so by my understanding, inline composables are not uh, um, skippable or restartable. Right, right now, I don't remember why is that, but yeah, uh, I, I will need to, I mean, I, I encourage you to, to, to get through that, but yeah, for sure, I can tell you that it is not, uh, I mean, that will be not skipped if you create a composable with inline. Okay, uh, next one. Might be uh, Ryan. Might not be exactly related, but I often see examples of people wrapping arguments to composables in extra. Yeah, I mean, um, can be because of you know those limitations that Compose have. Also, regarding to the list, right? Some people might use the new, fairly new value class Kotlin um, feature to you know wrap. The, the the list in a, in a, in a class and mark it as stable with the annotation. So I think that until the the, the composed team doesn't you know 
um, fix, or I don't know if they plan to, uh, this kind of thing, of things, we'll need to, to do this kind of stuff. Okay. Oh, I, I, oh so that was a continuation? Like yeah, extra, the, lambda? The, oh, yeah. So let me read it completely now. I'm going to be uh, people wrapping arguments to composable in extra lambda expressions. Yeah, so I think, uh, I don't know if you're referring to that, but I think at the end I uh, explained that uh, by using lambda functions, you may, you might be uh, skipping phases from the recomposition. Like if you, if you use a draw behind, you go straight to the uh, drawing phase and skip the composition phase and the layout phase. So that might be the, you know, the reason there. Okay. We have another one here. Uh, is that a binding already included in the composable logic or we have to implement it manually? Yeah, so basically um, data binding was a way to um, basically connect the data with the UI when we used to use XML. So with Compose, we don't need that anymore, neither view binding, uh, because Compose, as we, as we saw, basically converts data, a state, a set of properties, whatever, to UI. So basically, you don't need to, to, to care about that uh, because, uh, you know, it will be way, way easier. So don't worry. And because data binding sucks anyway. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I never, I never liked it. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I thought, I thought that it was like a, a over engineering solution. Um, yeah. And, but, but yeah, I think, and you know, I really love compose because I love simplicity, and but compose as everything, you know, have some complexity, especially, especially with, uh, with the stability things that we need to consider. Um. So, so yeah, course. we just need because, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I saw a thread in, in Twitter a couple of, of weeks ago of a lot of people complaining, oh, Compose is too, Compose is too slow, um, my list is janky. And then when I, when I went, you know, to, to, the, to the responses and they explaining what happening, they, uh, like, didn't, like, they didn't really understand Compose. Like, they didn't take time to read the documentation to read how Compose works, how can can we, you know, improve it. So uh, Compose is great, but we need to take time to understand it and, and you know, um, know the tips and tricks. Yeah, and also there is another aspect uh, people uh, seem to neglect a lot of times that uh, Compose uh, really makes, it, makes, makes the code decoupled and uh, makes the testing a lot more easier. Yeah, yeah, and that's great because uh, with, uh, you know, composables are in the end Kotlin functions, right? So yeah. that makes it uh, easy to test uh, composables in isolation. So we no longer need to load the entire screen uh, to test our UI. So we can create, you know, isolated tests now with, with Compose, which is, which is great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, that's it for the questions for now. Uh, I think we have uh, some time left. So uh, I, my, I myself have a question or maybe it's a, a whole topic if you want to uh, add something on it. What do you uh, okay. recommend uh, for uh, tips and tricks for building a design system uh, over Compose? You have any, Sorry, can you repeat uh, that? Do you have any tips for building a design system over Compose? Like where exactly Sorry. it fits, uh, like uh, on which uh, layer on uh, on top of uh, Compose UI or foundation? Uh, in general, do you have any uh, any sayings on, on that topic? Sorry, I didn't get it. You mean if I like what uh, advices I have to build Compose? To, to build a design system over Compose. Design system? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, basically Compose um, standardized the this design system, material design uh, system way of doing things. 
So basically with Compose theme, you can configure everything. And something great about Compose is that it saves time to us. For example, if you configure everything regarding your in your theme, so you can set um, the surface color right, or, or the background color. And then if you use a text on top of a surface, for example, a surface can be a card or a surface composable, then it will set the color that you set for the on surface. So, and that's a language that the design team understands, right? So in my team, in the team that I'm leading, I, uh, the design team uh, wasn't, wasn't, I didn't have like the color palette standardized. So basically we work together, we are standardized it, and then we have like a very, very, uh, straightforward and, and very fluid uh, communication and, and design system, you know, agreement. Um, because, you know, we are, we are now uh, talking in, in the same language. So before, it was like if the, if the design team was talking in one language and the dev team was, was talking in a, in a separate one. So now something great is the preview. So, for example, um, we have in, 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 the, in, in my team, we have like... Uh, the components, right? We have like a module for all the, the, the common components. And then uh, we have like the previews of all the possible states that the component can have. The previews can help you like uh, configure the dark mode, can help you configure like different densities, uh, different um, uh, languages. So you can test your composables in different uh, scenarios and just have like a catalog. Of your of your components, so I think Compose is is great, um, um, you know, in that uh, matter, in that perspective. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. So uh, it looks like that we uh, are out of questions. Do you uh, want to add anything uh, else, Yuri? Um, no, just you know, saying thank you for you guys to inviting me, giving this talk. I'm um, really, really happy to see the community getting together. And thank you for all the people watching. And I hope to to be part of, a, of our next event soon. OK, thank you, Yuri. We, we, we really enjoyed your session. It was very informative. And we, we would love to have you uh, next time around. All right, guys. Uh, thank you very much. See ya. Thank you, everyone.